My second day in Lisbon was my best day in Lisbon because this was the whole day to myself. I had already done all my travel the previous day, so there was no hassle of that, no flights to take, no immigration, no customs, nothing. I did not have to carry my backpack with me because I had the hotel room already and I was not working this day, so I had the full day for sightseeing or anything I wanted to do. So let's get into the story of the second day in Lisbon. Let's go travel the world, see the sights we need to see. From mountains, nights and ocean speed, we are wild and free. Come on, travel the world, there's so much we can do. Every city, every town, make the memories to you. Welcome back to Sunny Escapades. We are talking about Lisbon and my second day in Lisbon. I started this day quite early, I got up at 6 o'clock but I did not get out at 6 o'clock because it was still a bit dark outside and I wanted to go for a walk. I have recently been doing a morning walk and I feel that it is a quite a good thing to start the day and although when I travel I usually don't do the morning walk but this time because you know a strange city, strange country, you don't feel comfortable going out when there are not many people around. In Portugal I was feeling comfortable enough already that I thought okay I can try it. So I left about 7 o'clock in the morning and it was still not very crowded. There were not that many people. On the main road there were some uh, cars and some traffic but other than that the streets, the smaller streets especially were pretty much deserted. And uh, there is quite a bit of, you know, the uphill and downhill in Lisbon. So you have to have good shoes when you go to Lisbon. Keep that in mind, especially in some areas like Alfama and all that. So I walked around for, my plan was about half an hour, but it was almost close to an hour that I did because I just walked around and it took some pictures and it was nice. It was a good walk and it was a nice, pleasant time of day as well because like I said not very crowded. One thing that I needed at this time was that I needed a toothpaste because I had forgotten to pack my toothpaste this time. I usually keep a small half tube of toothpaste in my travel thing so that I can just pack that every time but uh, this time I forgot and also my toothbrush had run out of batteries. It needs two AA batteries so I thought okay this is something that I want to do, so let's do it in local style. I looked on Google Maps for some grocery stores, but it was too early. Even the ones that said on the Google Map that they are open at this time, they were not. So I tried two or three of them and then finally said, okay, well, let's go back. I went back to the hotel and then I asked at reception to see if they would have any uh, toothpaste or toothbrush. They did. And they had a little kit, like in a cardboard box, that had a toothbrush and also a little tiny tube of toothpaste. So that sorted me out for a few days. I bought uh, fresh toothpaste later on because I wanted Colgate. No, no sponsorship sadly, but yeah, um, I like the sensitive one. So I bought fresh later on because these things, I like doing these things in a strange country because they kind of give you a better idea of what the prices are and how the people are. Because if you go to a small shop or if you go to a small uh, supermarket kind of place where you have fine provisions and food, kind of things it's usually a better idea of the local culture than if you just go to touristy areas and go to touristy bars and restaurants and souvenir shops so i like doing these things a little bit but i'm weird so take it or leave it up to you uh but yeah so they sorted that out and i also asked them if they could get me a better chair because the chairs that they had in the room they were very small small uh low back chairs as well which were not very comfortable and because i was planning to work from there for three days so i wanted to have a slightly better chair if possible and they were very low backed and they were not comfortable at all i had tried them the previous night so i wasn't sure that they would have anything but uh, surprisingly they did they said yeah yeah they will bring one to my room and they did within a few minutes somebody came and then they gave me a straight back chair still but upholstered and much more comfortable for posture than the smaller ones still not like an ergonomic chair that i have at home but this was a hotel so i was happy to have any improvement. This hotel was really good, the Principe Avila. They provided everything I asked for. Whenever I had any special requests like this, they always were able to provide and with a lovely smile and quick service. So I would recommend this hotel if you want to go to Lisbon and find, want to have a good hotel. 
like a nice four star hotel not very expensive um okay so once i came back from my walk obviously i was a little warm and sweaty so it was a good time to take a shower nice bathroom nice shower cubicle they had supplied me with some uh, all-in-one kind of shower shampoo gel kind of thing which was okay not great not luxury level but it was all right and one thing that i liked in this hotel was that although they had the same round uh, soap in the hotel bathroom that every hotel has at which i hate this is my pet peeve but they also had hand wash the, the pump kind so i did not use that soap after i realized that they had a proper hand wash there as well so shower and then after that got ready and then went down to the breakfast at the first floor this hotel also had really really good breakfast i would say that again it's not the best breakfast because that honor has gone to a hotel in greece in athens which had absolutely fantastic food but this hotel principia villa also had really nice breakfast they had the white cheese was really nice and they had juices they had a nice expensive coffee machine for lattes and macchiatos and things like that they also had some salad by scrambled eggs and also a section for dessert like you know pan au chocolat there was a raisin play a um, couple of quite a few things also one thing which you would hear a lot in uh, in lisbon is the peste peste de nata and the famous one is the peste de belum is which i tried i think the next day or a couple of days later but uh, the hotel also had them this like a custard tart and it was nice it was nicer than that famous one for which there is usually a long queue i did not send the queue but there usually is a long queue for that one the hotel one was better but even then i would say it was Mm. okay -ish. i would not say that you have to go to lisbon for that if you go you should try it out but it was a little bit too gooey and too runny for my taste it's eggy obviously but it is the nata is the egg i think and um, it was sweet but uh, yeah i finished the one that i had in the hotel when i tried in the peste de bellum i did not finish that it was like even more runny so runny and liquidy and like sweet but keep in mind that i um, grew up in india and the desserts in india are the like their top level and i'm not biased i have tried desserts in many different countries of many different kinds of desserts and the stuff they have in paris is fantastic the stuff they have in italy like the tiramisu oh fantastic stuff yeah absolutely amazing but for sheer variety and the level of desserts nobody can beat in india anywhere in the world because every state has their own cuisine every state has their own desserts there are so many names that i can say which are my favorite so having grown up eating that sort of desserts that sort of sweets when somebody tells me this peste is like the world famous pastry i take it with a grain of salt not literally because it's a sweet thing but i don't actually i don't get taken in by the hype i tried and i said okay fine not fine okay i went to paris literally to check what pastries they had that have not been exported to other countries and they do have a few different ones and they are nice so i'm not gonna say just india is the only place where you can find good dessert there are other places but india has just more variety and all of that variety is absolutely great quality so that's why i say that india is in top in my book for dessert so pasta de nata try it in your hotel tried somewhere else don't bother about standing in the queue okay so that's just i'm busting that hype right now so i had that breakfast that was quite nice and the room had a nice large glass wall so you could sit near the window and then look outside and it was quite good after that i did something very active which is that i went to bed again and took a nap i think maybe half an hour or like an hour because i was a bit uh, not what we would call tired from the last day's travel but you get more into like a hypnotic kind of zone when you're traveling a lot and my travel was like the whole day to go from Doncaster all the way to Portugal so had that little nap which was nice and then I knew that I would be going out and I would not be coming back before sunset so I did not want to go for so long that it would be like nine ten hours I thought okay if I can go for five six hours that would be good enough that is like my level that's my extent of sightseeing I can do in one day and because I was traveling 
going solo so hey i'm making the plan and i'm sticking to the plan so uh nobody there to say oh, we want to see that also or we are tired or we want to have food which is nice and proper sit and rest over two hours nope nothing i am the boss i decide where i'm going to spend my time so this day i went only for a few hours so i left about two o'clock and it was a very warm day as well so you don't want to be out too much in the sun as well because it's not a beach and the one thing that is also great in lisbon which i had got introduced to in rome and later on got addicted to in budapest is e-scooters and um, budapest also has e-scooters and they have more companies of e-scooters so i had i knew about this so i already have a couple of couple of those companies i think i have bolt and uber a couple of those um, apps on my phone they're all set up so i took an e-scooter and then traveled around with that a little bit and i wanted to go to alfama district today and it is nice to ride a scooter in lisbon because people drivers just like budapest the drivers are nice they don't honk at you they don't crowd you into the curb and another thing which is even better than budapest is that they have more cycle lanes so they have either cycle lanes on the road itself where there's just a line dividing the traffic and the cycles the bike lane or there are wide cycle lanes on the footpath so there's like a very wide footpath divided from the road separated from the road by a row of trees and then out of that half of that is divided to give you a cycle lane so like wide cycle lanes all over the place which was really good the only caveat here is that not all the roads in lisbon are suitable for e-scooters or bikes because some of them are cobbled roads so they are literally like rocks so they are smooth stones but small stones and lots of uneven stones so some of those roads like the ones that go to alfama are horrible in terms of if you want to ride any kind of your own vehicle even a car i would not take my car there because in some place there was ruts in the road and you might damage the underside of the car and this on this route that the tram 28 also travels on this route goes all the way to the castle but uh, the problem was that i tried to go into that then but within like 10 feet i knew that this is not a place for a scooter i had to come back out to the main road and thought maybe can i can i find another way to go to alfama with a scooter no not possible so ultimately i parked it uh, someplace on the main road in a parking and this is different from budapest in budapest you can probably park that anywhere just off the road by the side of the footpath you can leave the scooter pretty much anywhere in uh, lisbon you have to put it in the actual parking it was same in oxford as well which is fine because there are so many parkings and they had lots of space there as well so i parked that and then i uh, took out my google maps and i started walking in the direction of alfama and alfama is famous for its you know the narrow winding streets will remind you of this or that mm, it's okay so narrow winding streets are all right the good thing about the narrow streets is that you don't get direct sun on your back all the time but it was still quite warm and i was not carrying my full backpack but i was still carrying my backpack for like a water bottle my camera tripod and things like that so it was okay it was a little bit um hard because of the heat but um I, yeah, I grew up in India, I grew up in Delhi and in Delhi there is a place called Khari Bawli near Chandni Chowk and there are so many narrow streets there, even narrower than Alfama. They are not world famous for that but they are uh, very very narrow and I used to, I was learning, um, I was an apprentice there in a shop in, in Khari Bawli so I worked there for about five months and I used to have to travel those streets a lot because one of my jobs was to collect money uh, from other businesses is the money that they owed uh, my boss so to no i did not go with a gun or anything it's not like that guys it's not the mafia it was a genuine bona fide business they sell spices and they always sell on credit so you go after like certain number of days and you collect the money um, but because of that I had to go into those narrow streets and in those narrow streets there are some very big businesses like multi-million rupees and billion rupees multi-billion rupees businesses in those streets in little shops okay, so I have had my fill of narrow streets but it was still okay it was nice as in some pictures it was some of those were picture worthy and there were lots of shops and restaurants and food shops in there as well and obviously a lot of souvenir shops 
not all the time but some near especially near the top and near the top you get that um, panoramic view which is quite lovely you can see all those red rooftops of uh, portugal which lisbon is famous for and you can see the sea so it's a pretty nice view i went there in the like a uh, blazing sun of midday which was bad but if you go at like sunset time it's absolutely gorgeous i did go there again and there was a little building which looked like a church and i took some nice pictures of that i thought this was the castello de sao george that they were advertising on the signs and the streets it was not um i did not know that and i did not even search for that on google but i thought uh, it was yeah it was picture worthy later on a couple of days later i found the actual castle and then i did go there and took us some sunset picture as well you will see those also um but for this day yeah so after a while took some pictures of the little tram the 28 which is quite nice and i did not travel in the tram and i don't regret it because it was very crowded and it was a long distance as well because way it starts uh, in the city and then it goes all the way to alfama and all the way to the castle that actually goes further up from where i was it goes to actual castle and um I don't want to stand in a little crowded tram for all that, especially in th those uh, uneven kind of roads. They're not very good roads. Um, but what you need is you need a picture of that because it is a pretty tram. But it was a nice picture. And also, if you're outside the tram, then you can take pictures of the streets. You can take lots of pictures of the shops and everything, which you can't do from the tram that well. So I don't regret it because I got what I wanted. And I'm always about photography. I want to take lots of good photos and videos for my channel obviously this is what you're watching um so after that i thought okay i'm hungry i wanted to get something yes i wanted to get a cap because i had not taken my cap with me i have a few caps but i just buy a new cap everywhere and this time i made a mistake what mistake i made being too ambitious about bargaining when i had come out of the airport into the station there there was a shop which was selling caps and other souvenirs and stuff and i asked him how much he was ch going to charge for one cap and he said eight euros and then immediately as i shook my head he said okay oh, adjust it i said okay no, never mind i'll come tomorrow thing is eight euros was a good price already and if he was going to adjust it that would have been even better because later on i could not find a cap in less than that here at alfama i asked one some of the guys who were selling the caps outside and they said 20 euros like i laughed in their faces and walked away but uh, yeah this is like a tourist trap stuff so you know one thing that i found was quite standard here was the postcards postcards were everywhere about about 50 not about exactly 50 euro cents everywhere for per postcard uh, unless you get some of the big ones like the thick uh, cardboard ones and stuff like that that door were more expensive and also one thing i liked here was that pretty much every shop was also selling stamps postage stamps for the postcards and generally the postage stamps were more expensive than the postcards so first time i bought postcards i bought four postcards and i bought four stamps for them and the postcard was 50 cents and the stamps were two euros each so like four times price of the postcard okay but um, the thing is i think i should have bought more stamps from there because those were nicer stamps they were like picture stamps and that guy was saying that i don't believe him i don't believe people very much in these tourist traps uh, shops because you know their job is to sell your stuff so i bought only four but that was okay then later on bought normal stamps which were cheaper i think they were 75 cents or one euro the ones i bought later uh, then i wanted food so i started looking for food and that was a bit hard here because i am vegetarian vegetarian food is a little bit of um yes yeah, a bit difficult to find here but i just kept walking down copying walking down and i've met a lot of bangladeshi people here and some indian well one or two indians in the, on the old portugal and uh, some nepali people as well and i found out and this is what you find out when you talk to people is that portugal used to be a nice place an easy place where people could go and get a work visa and then uh, get a passport in a couple of years which is much easier than other places like germany france greece so there were people who had worked in other places and they had come to portugal to get the passport and now it's become slightly harder uh, from what some taxi driver told me i yeah i talked to a lot of taxi drivers and a lot of shopkeepers and stuff and a lot of inside info on on the portuguese life and the lisbon life so from there i kept going down and then there was one shop which i liked which had a few chairs and i thought that i can just sit here and 
have an omelet or something but that place did not do any food they did only um tea and coffee okay that's fine so i bought toothpaste from there and uh, there was one more thing i bought i forgot what it was but maybe not i just bought toothpaste from there and then i kept walking that man he did suggest some other shops further down he said okay go to like a few doors down i did go a few doors down saw that shop and they were doing food but um i am not a snob but because i'm vegetarian so i'm very particular about smell so if something smells very much of meat i cannot just go and sit there and this place was a little bit close so i don't want to go inside and sit there so i said okay i walked in and they just walked out ultimately kept walking down and came back to the main road as well and then there i found a shop where i could buy some socks because if you have listened to my podcast or my vlogs before you would know i don't take too much stuff with me because i can buy some stuff from there for living there for a few days and also it it easier for me to travel light so i travel light from this way buy a couple of t-shirts some socks and stuff from there and bring whatever i want to bring from there so i bought a few pairs of socks i think three two or three pairs of socks and a nail cutter because i had not taken mine obviously you can't pack one in your carry-on and i only had that under under seat bag to carry on with me and then the double a batteries for my toothbrush as well uh this was yeah i don't know that girl gave me a toffee as well okay she's like oh yeah this is for you so okay i don't know whether they do it for all the tourists or because i look pretty much more interesting because i had the camera uh little osmo pocket 3 in my hand anyway so i bought this stuff from there and then i found a place for food which was further down and it was like a cafe and i could sit outside as well it was a very windy day they had some umbrella set up the next uh, coffee shop they were like little shops so i don't know if you can even call them a cafe because there was no space to sit inside only outside they had some umbrella set up as well and the wind was so strong that it blew the umbrella from the other shop further like several meters umbrella next to mine also but mine was okay uh, so i asked them i asked them what i can get and so i got a tomato sandwich tomato and cheese sandwich it was nice because it was grilled so it did that very well nice bread and uh, i had a coffee so coffee and sandwich which was pretty filling because that was a big sandwich really really big sandwich and then yeah i walked around a little bit more there but i wanted because it was you know sunset time so wanted to get some nice pictures of the sunset so i found on the internet i looked for where should i go for a good view of the city at sunset and i went to there's a word called miraduru miraduru means viewpoint and you will see this in lot in lisbon especially on the map as well so miraduru the santa lucia miraduru something something so i went to this uh, miraduru it's called miraduru the santa catarina and i do not recommend this i tried to get there by e-scooter because i love the e-scooter and i love the cool breeze that you get as you're traveling if you don't want to be stuck in a bus or even in an air-conditioned taxi it's better but problem was that i kept getting lost and i kept getting to these roads that are harder to navigate by e-scooter also i found that google maps doesn't really work for e-scooters in lisbon for some walking and sometimes for like public transport it was okay but for e-scooters not that much it got me lost so many times and it frustrated me so many times maybe because there are some different levels of roads as well sometimes and some of the routes some of the turns and things are in a way that like is up the stairs or in a corner so google maps can't handle that doesn't give you very clear directions for that public transport also it kind of frustrated me for a while until i figured it out so i ultimately i left the e-scooter and i called a taxi taxi are cheap in lisbon compared to uk so that was quite easy so i got the taxi and then taxi dropped me to the actual viewpoint and i walked like maybe two minutes five minutes and it was there so there are many reasons why i don't recommend this miraduru this viewpoint for the sunset pictures number one the view is very it's not unencumbered it's not a clear view of the bridge there is one great bridge in lisbon which is called the ponte the bridge of the 25th april okay and it looks like the golden gate it's a beautiful bridge and it looks even more beautiful if the sun is setting just at the time and it's really really good for photos it looks exactly like golden gate so why would it not but the thing is from here it's very much in the distance there are lots of houses and stuff in the way and it's not a clear picture 
picture it's not at good angle and a lot of distance so even though it is a very popular mira duru or viewpoint i would not recommend that another reason is it's very crowded because people know about this because this is on google and other places on the net there are a couple of bars there where people hang out and they charge you a lot of money as well i tried one drink at one of the pubs it was nice but expensive like eight euros for like a juice kind of drink eight nine euros and also because you can't get a good picture and also it's very very crowded yes but if you are the kind of person who is very social who likes to get to know other travelers other people when he's traveling and you are the kind of person who can make friends easily everywhere with strangers like that then you should definitely go there because there are a lot of tourists there are like a truckload of tourists who hang out here so i think if you are drinking and hanging out you would be very likely to make friends there okay so for that you can go there but for the pictures don't go there there are better places i'll tell you the better places later uh, yeah so i did hang out there because there was no not much time to go find some other better place so i just uh, hang out there took some pictures which you can see and um, after that had a drink and then walked out from there came back to this whole area uh, where i was before the miraduru that is called the praso de comercia so that was also nice but it's also very touristy okay so from there you can get good picture of the bridge as well and i wish i had stayed there rather than going to the Santa Catarina viewpoint okay so again it in here also there was um, somebody who was selling water so I got a bottle of water because my bottle was empty and um, it was like four euros and I said why is it four euros just like bottle of water should be like 75 cents or something and he was like well it's the price of the commerce yeah so okay yeah so that's fine but uh, then because i questioned it or whatever he gave it to me for three euros so saved a euro there but i found that you have to bargain i don't know if the water bottle is a bargainable item or not but for most of the items you do need to bargain especially in the souvenir shops bargain as best as you can i tried and i got some i think what i think was good bargains but you never know uh, maybe Maybe there are people who can do better than me there are people who can do better than me and they can get it for cheaper uh, but yeah remember to bargain wherever you go then yeah after that just came back from there Mira Duru. i did not call a taxi i just looked for public transport walked for a little bit and the benefit of the walking a little bit was that i got to see some more roads street life and ultimately ended up walking to uh, the Praça do Comercia and there's this big arch that is called the uh, Arco do Augusta Rua augusta so august red august maybe i don't know not red august but something with august anyway so that's a nice arch and again in the same square the process of the commercia took the public transport to get back because i was getting quite used to this metro already and um, i was hungry at this time as well so not hungry just hungry and um, i thought i could just go to the mall and then get some food from there maybe what i had yesterday with the thing that i did not know the name of the cheese and spinach thing and um, by the time i got to this mall the el corte inglés it was about closed what what about closed means here is that it was closed all the shops were closed but there were some restaurants on on a higher floor fourth floor which were open so because of that the outside doors were not closed you could come in and that's what the security guard told me i came in and i walked on the floor where i had been before and i saw there was one shop open which was a pizza shop everything else was either already closed or closing and those people were still serving pizza so i said okay can i take a slice of pizza please so i took a vegetarian pizza from there and the reason i'm telling you this not because i had a pizza and funny i'm look at me i'm so fancy i eat pizza and um, because this was a good interaction there was a lady there was a younger girl and there was a guy they were uh, the three people there they were all from africa and the reason that i'm telling you this is that i got into a conversation with, i don't know how i got into a conversation with them she the lady was serving me she asked me okay so how oh, you you hello alone it's first time in portugal so yeah i am alone so she's like oh why didn't you bring your family I, said, I have no family i am single oh so beautiful why no wife her english was not good but she was still carrying on her conversation pretty competently i would say and i said well no i don't want a wife she'll no get an african wife no problem so, okay so that was her suggestion recommendation but here's the funny thing there was a girl next to her the younger girl she was always saying no no you're right no wife means no trouble don't if you have a wife then that creates the trouble so already there were these two opinions and we were having like a not a con debate but more like a banter just like we were old friends so i <laughs> 
this is something I liked in Portugal that people were very friendly and open. If they could speak English, they would talk to you easily. So yeah, that, that was, that had me laughing all the way to my hotel when I got, got back with my pizza slices. I had one pizza slice and saved the next one for the next day because then we were working from the hotel. So I thought maybe I can have this for lunch. It was okay pizza. Not the greatest, but not the, not bad either. Did not go to that shop again somehow because I, yeah, I ate pretty much different places every night. Uh, yeah, so that was the day. That was the second day and I was already liking Portugal a lot so I took more pictures did more things in the next few days and if you want to hear those stories please make sure that you subscribe and if you like this video just click like and if you have other people who like travel stories feel free to share it with them I'll see you in the next video thank you and thanks for watching bye bye